Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to do my secret sauce and we're going to talk about my reverse secret sauce and in part two we're going to talk about legs and feet. So I have lots to show you. I haven't done this in a long time. Um, it's It just basically is uh, lumber from the hardware store, some stain, a little paint, um, a yucky brush, <laughs> a little spray sealer, a stencil. I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you everything, but the first thing I want to show you is my, this probably is my all-time favorite one that I've ever made. This is what it looks like. It has little white feet. And this started its life just as a piece of a board. The cheapest pine that you can get at, this one came from Home Depot, but the ones we're doing today came from Lowe's. And this is what it would look like if I had just stained it. This is what it looks like when you do secret sauce. The goal here really is we're trying to make this hardware store lumber look like vintage farmhouse wood not like just a piece of lumber that we went, <clears throat> purchased, had them cut, and then we did something to it. So that's the goal. This is the my favorite one. Um, the, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you a bunch more and then we'll start. How dark it is depends on how much you dilute your stain. And um, in two seconds, I will put, uh, my link here so that you guys can go look at stain, uh, paint, stencils, and gel inks. Okay, so this is one. <clears throat> I have lots here. Okay, here's one where I was heavy handed with the secret sauce and I used a darker stain because I didn't dilute it as much. I painted the edges of this one the lighter color, which is called biscuits and gravy. And then the feet are <clears throat> something, a combination of two pieces from Hobby Bobby, which we'll talk about feet and legs tomorrow. So I might give you just a little bit of information about that today, but part two will be all about feet and legs. Okay. So this is what, this is what this wood would look like if we hadn't done the secret sauce. And this is what it looks like when there is secret sauce. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see. Here is something that I made that is reverse secret sauce. This is essentially painted solidly with biscuits and gravy and then the, the stain is over the top and that's what gives it this streaky look. Look how cute these legs are. I'll tell you all about those tomorrow. Um, so this is just hardware store lumber and this is one of my favorite risers that I made. I made all of these guys, gosh, a year or a year and a half ago. And they just haven't come out of the closet in a while to play. I forgot they even existed. Here's one that is a very light reverse secret sauce and then it has that French stencil on it. Let me see if I can find myself here so I can put that link in. Here we go. Oops, what did I do? Sorry, give me two seconds. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay, so um, the, the link at the bottom of the page says secret sauce ingredients, if you want to go look at any of that. Um, all right, I have a couple more to show you. This one I made today. And this is, I'll show you what all this came from, um, but it's secret sauce. And it's basically this from Walmart and some legs that I put together from Walmart uh, with some E6000. We'll talk tomorrow all about the glue because that is important. <clears throat> and so this and this cost probably a combination of $3, maybe. And I made 
this cute little guy right here. reverse secret sauce also. This was one of the um, little bread boards that I ordered from Web Restaurant Store. And if anyone wants the information on these, they're, they're about four or five dollars a piece and they're super nice quality. So um, yeah, so I, this is reverse secret sauce and this is too, and then they're stenciled. And if you wanna look at any of those stencils, they're in that link right there. Okay, and then the last one I wanna show you is a round. Oh my word. We made so many of these like a year and a half ago. I, that's back when I was having live workshops and um, we made a Lazy Susan. So this is just a round that is like six dollars from Home Depot. It's painted and then it has the reverse secret sauce so it has the stain streaky on the top and then it's stenciled, and on the back is a um, Lazy Susan mechanism that came, these, this all came from Home Depot, even the handles, and, um, and then just a little cork. So this whole project here cost about $10. And um, anyways, okay, so let me find a place to set this. I have a lot of stuff on here. So, Let's start at the very beginning. Let's see where am I? Okay, so today, oh, and as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have questions along the way. This is not hard, but it is complicated to explain. And you're gonna think I have um, ADD because I'm gonna be jumping all over the place. And I may have a little bit of that. I might also have a little of OCD too. Um, anyways, we're crafting on the new cake boards that I told you guys about a couple days ago or yesterday. And what I did this morning is I went to Lowe's and I bought a board. It's, in, it's with the lumber. This is the least expensive, lowest quality board. It's 10 inches wide by six feet tall. I wish, I haven't done this in so long, I wish I would have bought the 12 inch wide board that's six feet tall, but I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Thank you for the star, Shirley, I really appreciate that. Um, so then I had them cut it with their saw. And they'll do, they don't like to do cuts that are shorter than 12 inches. Also, they don't want you to buy a board and have them cut it into a bazillion little pieces. Their saw is, is <laughs> major. It looks super dangerous to me, but this is what it's going to look like. It's terrible. Okay. So I had them cut three pieces that were 18 inches long. And then I had them, with what was left, I had them cut one that was 10 by 10. 10 by 12, I think. So I could do one smaller one. All right, and then the first thing that I did when I got home is I just took some very coarse sandpaper. It's 80. I don't have any, um, I don't own any like equipment for woodworking. I don't have a, a sander, I don't have a, a saw <laughs> or any of that. So I do all everything here by hand and you can too. You don't have to have any special equipment. So I just went out in the backyard and what you want is to sand the corners so that they are a little bit curved and the corners and then you want to sand a little bit of this, okay? So I don't know, it doesn't look like I did a very good job. I don't want to get a whole bunch of sand in my workspace, okay. So then the really fun part, which back when I was doing actual live workshops, I used to say, if you guys have had a really bad day or a bad week or you're stressed out, 
or you just need to relieve some tension, you're gonna love the next part. And we would get out hammers and this. I'll show you this in just a second. I can't do too many because my husband is downstairs working and he'll be up here wondering what in the world's going on. This is some uh, chain from a fence from Home Depot. And we would just, we'd use a nice pick and we're, we're just dinging this up so it doesn't look new. Okay, and then um, when you hammer on these, it makes some really interesting. You can also use an ice pick, and you can get your piece as dinged up as you want. I'm not going to ding this up too much, but let me show you the one that was really dinged up. I'm not sure that that's an actual word. And I'll tell you how I came up with the name of this technique as secret sauce in just a second. Okay, so this one we dinged up. Can you see all those places, those dark places where the stain soaked in? And here I used an ice pick to make the look of as if you have, um, what are those little bugs that get in wood? I can't think of it. Anyways, this is seriously dinged up. Wormholes. That's what it is. So it looks old. And just to compare, that's the front of it. This is what it looks like when you don't do anything to it, which is pretty. Some people like that better. But I like the look that is more distressed and vintage-y looking. All right. So after we dinged it up, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some paint on it in a really streaky fashion. We're using the cruddiest chip brush that you can find. I mean, this is super cruddy. And we're gonna be using some paint from Maker Studio. Um, but I wanna explain one thing, okay. A year and a half ago, when I was doing this, they had this large size of biscuits and gravy. They don't have that anymore. Now all they have is this little one. It's two ounces, which it is enough to do a project or two. But don't think that if you order that you're getting this size because this is all they have now. And um, so we're using biscuits and gravy. I'm gonna go for my bigger container. Uh, this is the best color, oh my gosh. And this is the color that I use the most. So um, I did put a link down here. And again, if you order it, it'll come this size, which is two ounces. Okay, so then I'm just, I'm gonna operate off of a paper plate. Can you guys see okay? If, hey, I forgot to say, if the comments here are in your way, you can either swipe them up or swipe them to the side, depending on what device you're on, and they will disappear. And then if you want them back, you can swipe the opposite direction and they'll come back. But I do realize that my hands are right in the spot where <clears throat> the comments are. So, okay, so I'm gonna just take some paint with my cruddy brush and I'm gonna take a, a, a good amount of it off. We, this is almost like a dry brush technique. Oh, and the secret sauce thing, so um, I didn't call it anything the first couple times I taught a class. And then somebody said, how do you know uh, how, much, how much you should dilute your stain? And I said, you know, it's kind of like that, that secret sauce that you can get with french fries that some places it's ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise. Other places it's just ketchup and mustard. Um, and in different percentages, and you just come to know what secret sauce you like. And so that's how it started. And then the reverse secret sauce was just a natural evolution from secret sauce. So my brush is pretty dry, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go real wispy over the top of it. It needs more paint than that. And I will pick this up so I can show you. Um, you really don't want big, big globs. And you don't want to start at the same spot every time you go across. So 
So I'm just dipping it in my paint and then taking some of it off on the paper plate. I need my glasses. So I can see. You might have noticed that I have on an apron today. I don't normally do that, but this is a messy project. And, you know, paint doesn't come off of jeans or your clothes very well. So that's why I'm wearing an apron. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I'll hold it up. Whoops. I'm trying to see where's the light going to be so that you can see. Can you see it all? Yeah. There we go. So it's just randomly placed going across. Some people like to go against the grain. That's, you know, personal preference. And you're not going to know which way you like it best until you try a couple. This whole board that was 10 inches wide and six feet tall, it was $13 and I got five pieces cut from it. So if you, um, if you try it and you don't like it, you wish it would have been darker, you wish you would have had a more secret sauce, whatever, um, just try again. It just takes a little practice to get to know what you like. Okay, so now another move that you can do, I call jab and stab. And that's just where you, you're just putting your brush down. Okay, there must be uh, wind or something. My dogs are going crazy. I'm sorry about that. I am putting this on just so you can see it better. A little bit darker than what, a little bit more than what I might ordinarily do. And then I do like to have a few little bits around the edge. Okay, so that's the first step. And we're, we are using Maker Studio Biscuits and Gravy. This is the color, but this is the actual size that it would come in. And this is enough to do a couple of projects. All right, and this is what it looks like right now, okay? Let me find a paper plate and we're going to kind of try to dry it a little bit. I need one that doesn't have glitter on it because I don't want it to get stuck with glitter in it. This does dry so quick. Um, let's see, what should I tell you about in the meantime? We're going to be using a fun stencil. Uh, but let me show you this, this stencil right here. Maker Studio has a couple of um, stencils that are called tiles. Um, they're meant for you to be doing those 12 by 12 tiles on the floor. This is the one I love so much. I think this is called Clubs. And this is the one that I used to make this beautiful project. And when I was doing this big project, I used the biscuits and gravy paint over the top of my stencil for this one. Um, the thing with that is paint is generally speaking, even chalk paint, it's not great for your stencils. So you need to move quickly and you need to get your stencils washed immediately before the paint can dry in your stencil holes and clog it all up. And you can see, <laughs> my stencil looks pretty cruddy. Here's another one. And there's one or two more. Um, also in the preview um, that I posted with pictures, this was the one that I used, this B. This is great stencil. We're not gonna use it today, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Okay, let me fan this just a little bit more. So you can beat up your board as much as you like. You can use scissors, an ice pick, a screwdriver, a hammer, whatever this part of the hammer is called, an ice pick, a chain link that you, if you're outside, you can just fling it at your board or you can lay it on your board and hit it with a hammer. Um, you can totally go to town. 
And if you do this project, you will figure out what amount of secret sauce, which is the beating up part and the, um, and also the, um, how dark you like your stain, you'll figure that out. It just, it, it's hard to decide beforehand. You need to do a couple projects to figure that out. Still looks a little bit wet, wet, wet right here. But it's hardly any paint. Okay. So let's talk about the stain next. This is my all time, all, all, all time favorite stain. It's called, it's called Hazel Mahogany Gel Stain, and I put a link down here. This is the size that you will get, and it lasts forever. Um, but they do have other colors. Let me see if I can find my little boards to show you. There's a, there's a gray stain and there's a black stain and then there's more of a caramely color stain. The one I like the best is Hazel Mahogany. Okay, and I just used a plastic spoon, we're not fancy here, to put a couple of heaping spoonfuls of the stain into this solo cup. And then I added some water, which I'm thinking I kind of want to add a little bit more. I did it from the faucet. And it can be regular water. It does not have to be distilled. This is distilled, but that doesn't, that's not gonna make any difference. I'll show you what this consistency is gonna look like. You definitely want to protect your work surface. So it's kind of runny. Uh, when it's in the container full strength, let me see if I can open it. I'll show you what it's like a gel almost. It's thick. I don't want to tip it too far and pour it all over my new crafting desk. And it smells good. These things have essential oils in them that are like citrus notes. So it kind of smells like oranges and lemons. All right, so I'm gonna say this is dry enough. And all we're gonna do is I have some fancy paper towels that I've pre-wetted. Pull them apart. And I'm not gonna worry too much about the sides because I prefer, this is my secret sauce recipe. This is how I like it the best. I prefer for them to be painted rather than stained the same as the top. I, that, I, it just looks more finished to me. But that's just how I like it. So I'm not going to worry too much about the um, sides. I'll paint those after everything is dry. Okay, so I'm going to just take a sponge brush. Whatever size you have will do. And get some stain on it. And then we're going to start in the top and go across. And when the, can you guys see okay? When the magic appears is when we're taking it off. So if, if once you take your stain off, you decide that you wish it was darker, you can reapply again and let it soak in a little bit longer and you'll get a darker look. For my secret sauce, I tend to like more medium. Ooh, this is gonna be pretty. Okay. So, pick this up without dropping it. This is what it looks like right now. And I am just going to take some of my damp paper towels and we're basically picking up the excess before it all gets soaked into the board. Oh my gosh, this is pretty forgotten completely about doing this technique. I don't know, I got distracted and I haven't gotten back to it for a while. The more you keep going over it, the more you'll pick up. 
So you decide, do you want certain areas to be darker uh, or lighter? Ooh, this is really pretty. So all the areas that you see that are lighter, that are streaky, those are supposed to look like aged farmhouse wood, like from a barn or an old floor or something, or something like that, is where I put the paint on. And when we applied the stain, it wasn't able to soak into the wood. And so we were able basically to, to pull it off with a wet paper towel. Okay, so the next step, which we're not going to do, I have one all ready to go, is um, I would let it dry. And then before I move on to do any stenciling, I would use this outside, a real good coat so that it's sealed, but don't do it while it's wet. And what this clear matte spray sealer, any brand, it doesn't have to be this, what it does is it seals the fibers of your wood surface so that when you stencil on them, they don't grab all that medium and spread it all out. Do you guys like my <laughs> visual demonstration? Um, anyway, so that's what it does. And that's why I totally recommend that you do this before you stencil, after it's completely dry. And I would stain the underneath of it and I would paint the sides, but after this is dry is when I would do that and before I spray it. So let me set this aside and bring out the one that I did beforehand to get ready. Is this one right here? And I did stain the whole entire thing just so that you could see this is without secret sauce. This is with secret sauce. Without, with. And this is a medium amount of stain on here. I could have done it heavier if I wanted. Uh, okay, so there's so many stencils to choose from. This would probably be cute with the little bee in the center of it. But I want to use this new one that I just received. It's um, all baking stuff. And since I would probably use this as a food riser, um, I would put like um, crackers, not wet food, but dry things on here. And then if I wanted to serve olives or a spread or cheese or something, I would put them either in a little um, dish of some sort or on a little teeny little plastic, clear plastic paper plate. So don't put olives <laughs> or wet cheese directly on your board, even when you're done. Um, so this is what this stencil looks like. It's super cute. And I'm thinking, this is the one I used on this little guy. This will get another probably two coats of this spray this afternoon just to seal everything in. Um, but isn't that darling? And there is a, I did pin some links down at the bottom. It says secret sauce ingredients. Okay, so that was that one. But I want to use this loaf of bread in one quarter and this wheat in the other. And so I'm gonna take my stencil out of the package. Where did I put my Sharpie? And I'm gonna cut this apart from the other pieces of the stencil. These gray stencils, by the way, they do not need to be fuzzed. They're not as sticky as the green ones, so please don't fuzz them. out a little bit right here. All right. So I'm going to label this one bread. And I love how it has the wheat. And then we're going to be using the wheat on the other corner. Or maybe in the center. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. B-R-E-A-D. Always label 
the back of your carrier sheets with what they are so that when your stencil is clean and uh, ready to be put away, you know which side to put it on because that is important. Um, okay, so let me trim up this wheat here just a little bit. Does not need to be quite so pointy. -y. I'm going to just write wheat. Okay, so just to review, you could use the, if you ordered this, the biscuits and gravy rescue restore paint to do your stencils, but paint is hard on stencils and it can sometimes clog the holes in the stencils, which make it so that your stencil isn't so great the next time. And these, you're gonna be able to reuse them 20, 30, even more times if you take care of them. So, um, so you can do that if you want. You can use Rescue Restore Paint. And to apply it, let me show you this real quick. When you're working with something that is thinner consistency and this paint is thinner you're going to use a foam dome brush these just came from walmart uh, maker studio also has one too but it's bigger so it might not work for every stencil and you're basically just going to put some plate some paint out on a plate and you're going to dab your little foam dome in it and then dab some of it off and then you'll basically be pushing it through the holes of your stencil when you're using paint. Oh, and by the way, acrylic paint and craft paint are also risky for your stencils for the exact same reason. Um, so, okay, so I think, let me look at this. I think this is what we're gonna do. I'll try to hold it up. And I could do a word in the center if I wanted, but I think this is plenty. So I'm just going to take my stencils off the carrier sheet and lay them down, rub them on. And we're using gel art ink today, which Magnolia has a lot, a lot, a lot of different colors. And uh, for this project, we're just going to use white. But if you had a very much lighter surface, you could use their dark gray, which is called, let me see, Hold Your Horses. Or you could use their brown, which is called Witch Eye Swainy. I don't know if that's how I can say it. Or they have some new um, metallics that you could use. But I'm gonna use Well I Declare White for today. And I'm gonna use their little spreader. They have their own kind of spreader that comes in a bigger piece that you can cut into smaller pieces. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my, what's going on here? On my spreader. Like that, just a little blob. And if you're just joining us, if these comments are in your way, you can swipe them away. And I, I don't know if people have asked questions. Um, there's, gosh, 390 people on. Uh, but if you have, I will, as soon as I'm done here, I will get off and answer all the questions. And if you want more specific links or links for anything else, just let me know that in the comments and I'd be glad to do that. Okay, so let's do this top one first. Oh, shoot. Well, that's why, why I'm wearing an apron. <laughs> I don't think I got it on myself. Okay. So, this gel art ink is, was actually made originally for you to use on fabric. Um, and you can heat set it and they have some beautiful colors. Uh, but we found that it works pretty good on any kind of porous surface. And guess what? Wood is porous. 
And if we um, seal it, we should be good to go. Now we're not gonna ever put this in a soapy sink of water or in the dishwasher, obviously. Um, you wouldn't do that with a wood board anyways. Uh, but, and like I said, don't put any wet food on it. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh my gosh, okay, let me throw this in my little tub of water and I'll show you. Look how pretty that is. This would be gorgeous in the um, in any of the metallic colors too. Okay, let's do the other little piece here. Then I'll try to wrap things up a little bit and tomorrow we'll be talking about legs. Oh, hey, by the way, did you guys see my fun Valentine's Day banner that we made yesterday that I'm going to, going to give away tomorrow morning? If you didn't, take a peek in the, um, the videos and other photos and posts that I did here at DIY Dreaming and you can find out more about it. It was really fun. Today I decided to really switch things up and do some wood projects. I don't want you guys to get bored of me. And so I really do my best not to keep doing the same kinds of projects over and over and over. Which is hard because I have my favorites but uh, I want you guys to not say everything she does looks all the same. So that's why I'm really trying to mix it up. And since I sprayed this before I am stenciling on it, the stencils are coming out pretty crisp. I just want to pull off a little bit of the super excess. This is what it looks like. I'm trying to get my fingernail, which I have no fingernails, underneath a corner here. There we go. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, and they have some beautiful words. So I don't know, it might be really nice to have a word across the center. But once we get the sides painted and some legs on it and get it sprayed, it's going to all make sense. So what do you guys think? I love it. I think it's a beautiful farmhouse looking, it can be a beautiful farmhouse looking riser when it's all finished. Um... What else do I need to tell you? This was the one that I did earlier in case you missed that. Same stencil set. I could have used this one too because this part's pretty cute. All the parts to that stencil are pretty darn cute. There's whisk taker. This would be super cute for some dish towels, which I probably will do. And look, there's a rolling pin and an oven mat and, and baker boss. That would not describe me because I am not a big baker. Um, I enjoy setting the table more than I enjoy the meal preparation or even the actual food. And that's probably not a surprise. So this is what we have. We did the first step of this today. I showed you step by step how to do the secret sauce. And um, I just want to remind you that if you like a darker look, you can put more, uh, a thicker stain on. You don't have to dilute it with as much water, which this right here is about probably one to one. It's equal parts of stain and water. Um, if you just, if trying this, if you decide that you like more areas that look like they're beat up, then you can just go to town with whatever instrument of damage you choose. If you like more streaks in it, you can do that as well by just doing more of the paint across it. And um, tonight, after this is all dry, I will finish this up. Oh, look at where the stain has settled in now that it's starting to dry in some of the places where I knocked it up. Do you guys see that? That's what beating up your board does, is it gives you those little pit marks where the stain 
we'll go into it. I don't know if I'm too close or not. Anyways, and when I'm, here's one last tip. When I'm at the hardware store trying to pick out which piece of wood I want to ask to be cut, I'm looking for the piece that has the most knots and just visual interest going on. Like, look at this piece right here. It has two knots just right here. But the first time I went to Home Depot to get wood for this project, um, I asked the guy if he could help me find the best board that didn't have any of this, these knots and stuff going on. And he said, ma'am, you do realize that this was a tree and that that is where there were branches and things going on. And I was like, oh. And then the more I did this with people at my actual workshops, the more I decided that the stuff that it has gives it more interest. So if you're looking for boards, um, I do suggest that you, you think about getting the 12 inch wide rather than the 10 inch. I just wasn't remembering what I liked the best while I was there. And you can get, um, you know, six feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, whatever length you want and have them cut it whatever length you want to. But if you have a 12 inch wide, then you can do a 12 inch um, square. You can have it cut in 12 inches. And then these stencils work perfect for that. Okay, dokie. If you want any more information, feel free to look right down here. If you have questions, let me know. If you decide to do this project, um, I would love to see pictures over at Dreamy DIY. Um, tomorrow, th so this was part one, tomorrow I'll be doing part two, and I'm gonna show you um, some of the different legs that you can do, like do you remember from my trip to, uh, I might have to use these on this one. My trip to Goodwill, I found this 3D uh, tic-tac-toe board. I could use these for feet. At the, I'm kind of, kind of frugal about the feet because you can get some beautiful carved ones, but they're like four dollars a piece or more, and I don't want to spend sixteen dollars on legs to go on a board that cost me a dollar twenty-five. Um, so these came also from Lowe's, and they were like a dollar. 50 or $1.60 a piece. And my plan, if I decide to use them, is to drill a shallow hole on the underneath of whichever tray they would go on and to use a whole bunch of E6000, which I don't know where that's gone. A whole bunch of E6000 glue. So, but there are other options from Hobby Lobby and I'm gonna show you how you can combine things and come up with something completely unique just to you tomorrow. So thanks for joining me. Hey, if you would like to have pancakes tomorrow, you wanna to see part two, give me a this or a this. Make sure you've liked and followed me. Look at those three little dots on the right-hand side of your screen. If you click those, you can set, on, set your notices somehow <laughs> so that Facebook will know that you want to see uh, the videos or you can say something in the comments. Those are the things that Facebook looks for to see if you want to keep seeing DIY dreaming. And if you watched part one, I'm thinking you're going to want to watch part two. So look for me tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Um, look at this beautiful wreath project. There's two or three posts about that from yesterday if you're interested. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. Oh, I hate to turn it off while there's still hearts flying up, but I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you guys later.